Hello everyone and welcome. A brand new Pixelmator Pro update, version 3.3 Mosaic, has just been released and in this video I'm going to highlight and demonstrate the main new features as part of it. These include the ability to remove and replace colours in videos, allowing you to work with green screens in Pixelmator, new clarity, texture and selective clarity colour adjustments, as well as the ability to customise strokes or outlines more than before and save them as presets. The new remove and replace colour adjustments can be used to remove all instances of a specific colour from a video and replace it with something else, be it a different colour or even another image or video layer. It works effectively like a chroma key tool in other video editing applications that you might use for similar green or blue screen applications only it's much simpler to use in Pixelmator. In this example that I've got here, I have a video of two fruits being held up against a blue background. And I want to replace the blue background with something else. The first thing to do is to make sure that my video layer is selected by selecting it in the Layers panel on the left. And then I'm going to press the A key on my keyboard to bring up the colour adjustments panel on the right. In this panel I'm going to scroll down until I come across the replace colour and remove colour adjustments. I'm going to start with replace colour first. I'm going to turn on the adjustment and then you'll see I've got this very easy to use interface. We have two colour boxes. The colour on the left is the one that I want to replace from my video and the one on the right is what I want it to be replaced with. For the one on the left I'm going to use the colour picker and I'm going to select the blue background from my video. For the colour on the right I'm going to click on the white box and I'm going to choose a colour from here. In this case I'm going to pick the red at the bottom here. You can see immediately that Pixelmator has replaced all of the blue with this new red colour and I can go ahead and play my video to see the effect in real time. Below the two colour boxes I have range and intensity sliders. The range slider allows me to adjust how much of the colours similar to the selected colour should be replaced. This is useful if you have a background that isn't 100% even maybe because of lighting or shadows, and you want to make sure that Pixelmator can pick up the whole background so it's removed properly. The second intensity slider will let you choose how much of the old colour should blend with the new colour. So if I set this back to zero, you'll see I go back to the blue background I had before, and I can change the intensity of the blending. I'm going to leave it at 100%. What I'm now going to do is I'm going to turn off the replace colour adjustment. Moving on to the remove colour adjustment, I'm going to turn it on and then as with before I'm going to select our blue background. I'm going to use the colour picker and then just hover my mouse over the background and click it. Now this time instead of replacing the, the blue background with something else it's just completely removed it and you can see we've got this checkered pattern which basically denotes the fact that that area is now transparent. This means we can actually bring in our own video or image layer um, behind the video layer that we've just edited, and that will appear behind it. If we look in the Layers panel on to the left, you can see I've actually got an image layer beneath the video layer that we've just edited. If I turn this on, you'll see that where the blue background was, that's now been replaced by the image I've got. In this case, it's just an image of the, of the market. Um, and if I play the video, you can see we've now had the same effect that we got earlier, but it's now just with the image in the background instead of the colour. So those are the basics of how you can use the new replace and remove colour functionality in Pixelmator to achieve some really interesting and creative effects. The next major feature in 3.3 Mosaic is the set of enhancements that have been made to the colour adjustments. We have a renewed set of basic colour adjustments which now use a new intelligent uh, algorithm to make them more effective. In addition to this, we also have a couple of new adjustments. 
at the bottom here we have texture and clarity. The texture adjustment can be used to subtly add contrast to images to make the textures pop, or you can actually reduce the texture to smooth out the image. And similarly, the clarity adjustment can be used to subtly enhance image brightness and colours to make the image look sharper and clearer, or you can reduce the clarity again to make the image look smoother. Now both of these new colour adjustments are brilliant and they work very well. For example, if I increase the clarity, you can see the whole image starting to look a lot brighter. However, there may be cases where I perhaps don't want to have the entire image have this cl cl clarity adjustment applied to it. Maybe I just want to have the sky at the top appear clearer and brighter. Thankfully, in 3.3 Mosaic, we can do just that. I'm going to reset the adjustment that I just applied. I'm going to come down to just below that where it says selective clarity and I'm going to turn that adjustment on. What this allows us to do is change both the texture and clarity individually in either the shadows, midtones and highlights separately. So in the case of what I wanted to do which is change the sky to be a bit clearer, all I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the highlights and then I'm going to take my clarity and I'm going to increase it. Now the sky has been increased in clarity, but the rest of it has stayed the same. So the dark tree on the left has stayed the same, the grass hasn't changed much. And if I hold down the option key and then click on the comparison button down at the bottom, you can see the difference at the top where the sky is much clearer on the right compared to the left, but the rest of the image is broadly the same. And of course I could go ahead and do the same for both the midtones and the shadows if I wanted to, which is what makes this such a powerful feature. The final major part of this update that I'm going to talk about in this video is the added customization that has been given when it comes to creating strokes or outlines as you might call them. I have a Pixelmator Pro icon um, image loaded here just on a white background. I'm going to add a stroke to this image. All I have to do is make sure it's selected and then press the S key on my keyboard to bring up the styles panel on the right and then where it's a stroke I'm just going to turn it on. What we see here is familiar to anyone who's used the stroke feature in previous versions of Pixelmator Pro. We can choose the colour, so we can change it from a colour to a gradient or a pattern. We can change the thickness of the stroke, which I'm going to increase to 10. And then we can change the colour as well as the opacity. Nothing has changed there. The changes are to be found on the stroke style drop down menu. Once you've clicked on that, you can see we have a whole new load of stroke options. At the top, we can choose from a preloaded selection of stroke styles um, that come with Pixelmator. I'm going to choose a dashed line. Using these first three options, we can change both the position and the appearance of the line itself. We can change the alignment of the stroke, whether we want it in the center, the inside, or as I'm going to do on the outside. Coming down, we can change the style of the stroke caps. So at the moment, they're on but but you can choose from round or square. I'm going to go for round. And then finally we've got corner, so we can change the corner geometry of the stroke. And I'm going to keep it as square, but you can choose from either round or bevel. At the bottom we are able to customise the dashed line. So if we want we can actually turn off the dashed line straight from here. Or we can turn it on and we can actually build our own dashed line based on lengths and gaps. At the moment, we have a dash line that is basically a dash of length 4 with a gap of 2 and this repeats all the way around our shape. However what we are able to do is we can actually create a dash that has two parts and I'll show you what I mean now. We've got at the moment a 4 and a 2. However what I'm going to do is I'm also going to create a second part to this repeating pattern which is going to be a second dash that is 2 in length with another gap of 2. And now when we look back at our dash line you can see we start with a dash length of 4 with a gap of 2 and then we have another dash that is this time a length of 2 and then another gap of 2 and that just keeps repeating all the way around. We can actually create our own dash line from scratch which is obviously going to be very useful if you want something specific that isn't already in the selection of lines that come with Pixelmator. And the great thing is, 
that if we want to save this line that we've created for future use, all we have to do is click on the plus icon at the top of this stroke style menu. And we've got our new dashed line that we just created ready to be used at a later date. So that's everything I wanted to cover on Pixelmator 3.3 Mosaic in this video. I think all three of the features that I covered in this video are going to be beneficial to a lot of people, especially the green screen ability that now exists within Pixelmator, which now means that you don't need to use a complicated video editing program to be able to get really quite effective green screen results from an easy to use application like Pixelmator. If you found this video helpful, then please do give it a thumbs up. And if you've got any questions or comments, then do leave them in the comments section of this video. Please also do consider subscribing. And if you do subscribe, don't forget to hit the bell notification icon so you get notified whenever I upload any new videos. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.